nationalize what we built for them. They took... <laughs> they took our oil. Well, what do you mean it's not our oil? It's not our... We don't own, we don't own uh, Saudi Arabia. They do. We own, by contract right, the installations which we devised to begin with, and we helped them to build. But it sounds like we, you're saying because we uh, exported our technology, therefore they owe us. That sounds like the, the, the altruism that you condemned a moment ago. How? Altruism is the unearned. And this, we earned and they nationalized from us. Right. They have no right to their soil if they do nothing with it. Well, rights are not involved in those primitive societies, but they make a deal with us. They want to bring us in to develop their oil, and then they try to exploit and to literally murder us by means of that oil. That is the unforgivable crime. Uh, they would argue that, uh, I mean, some in the Middle East would argue that uh, it's, first of all, it's their oil. They're grateful for whatever technology we were able to share with them, but they, they will claim that they paid for that, uh, that they responded by presenting us with uh, monies that were appropriate to the services we tendered them, and that let's not expect any favors for them, and that the world markets of laws of supply and demand should determine what the price of oil is. They wouldn't be in a position of monopoly that they have today if we hadn't calmly agreed to let them nationalize Okay, then that's our, our problem. Production. Then we should have been more foresighted when we... Oh, were. certainly. That I agree All with. right, well, why should we make them pay now for what we failed to put into our contract with we, them? We're not making them pay. Well, we we're are. If we are worth, if we're insisting on getting oil at a, at a, uh, a cheaper price. We merely bargain and give in every time. Right. And in a proper society, a government would never let it come that far. But uh, let me answer one point you made, that is their oil. No, it isn't. It was there for centuries, and they didn't know what to do with it. We don't e export our technology. We export our minds and our knowledge, without which they couldn't exist, and they admit it. They nationalized oil in a lot of those countries, and then won the Americans or a few Europeans to come and help them run it. They can't even run the oil industry after they've copied everything from us. It can't be done. You're a, so they're expropriating you. See. Okay, I just want to get this in before we break. You're an atheist. Yes. <laughs> I could do the same to you, you know. Why? <laughs> Since you're the host, I won't say it, but <laughs> in other circumstances, I would say I don't approve of religion. I recognize your right to it, but... Yeah, you don't approve of religion because? Because it's mystical, because it's based on faith, not on reason, reason and facts. So? So for you, but not for others, okay. What do you care? Somebody wants to worship a Christmas tree or a uh, telephone well, pole, that's their business. I, I wouldn't stop them legally. I said I grant them the right to uh, uh, believe anything they want, but I don't have to approve. And the question was, I would say, you know, <laughs> at them, yeah. but I would never pass any laws to stop them. Yeah. You've got to allow that, that uh, you're not smart enough to know whether or not there's a God. Yes, I am and everybody here is. Is what? Smart enough. That doesn't take much intelligence. You, you know why? Why? Because you, uh, you're not called upon, I cannot be called upon to know a negative or to prove a negative. If there is a God and you prove it, that's fine. But you can't tell me, you can't know that there isn't. I would say, yes, I know that there isn't because I've been given no evidence. Well, but the fact that you've been given no evidence may mean you just haven't been in the right place at the right time. Well. I mean, it may mean that. No. No. It c could mean, mean that about somebody else, but not about me. Right. Uh, okay. Because I I'm don't, interested in sure. this. Sure. I, I honestly don't want to be theatrical about this, and I'm not suggesting that you haven't been in this dialogue before, but I still have a lot of problems with... Uh, I think atheists are as arrogant as many of the so-called Christians or religionists that you decry. I'm saying, in, what way? in that you are here with your certainty saying there is no God, and anybody who believes there is, 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 is it's almost a suggestion that you're foolish if you believe that there is. 
And uh, I think no. that's a little arrogant and condescending, if you... If no, I don't call it foolish. I would have, if you want to tell the truth, I think it's a bad sign psychologically. It is a sign of a psychological weakness of a man who is afraid to stand on his own mind and his own responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, the absence of proof has gone on for centuries. Mm -hmm. Every argument for the existence of God is incomplete, improper, and has been refuted. Mm -hmm. And people go on and on because they want to believe. Well, I regard it as evil to place your emotions, your desire, above the evidence of what your mind knows. Okay, and I regard it as intellectually lazy to look at the universe and to suggest, as you seem to be doing, <laughs> that this is all some accident. I didn't say that. Well, how in the world do we get all this order? Aren't you impressed with that? No, because the order is only in good cases in the minds of your scientists who are able to understand some part of it. Yeah. But there isn't an artificial order in the universe, and it's not chance. What would be the alternative? Nature. That the universe, and remember, the universe is everything that exists, has always been here. Because you cannot dis uh, discuss or know anything about what was here before anything existed. A zero. Well, the question's absurd. Doesn't exist. The, the question is absurd. That's what right. was here before there was something here? Uh, it, exactly. If there was something here before there was something here, then there, then there right. was something there already. Exactly. And then we have to ask what was there first. That's right. All right. So all but I'm asking, Miss Rand, uh, is uh, excuse one me. One thing, but that's what you're doing with the idea of God speaking philosophically. True. You say you need someone to explain the order, but what will you then have to explain God? You have to take what exists as a fact and you start with what exists, and you see how much you can learn about it. But... Uh, aren't, you really, aren't you really filled with wonder when you look up at the stars? No, and I don't like to look at them. I love this earth. You know when I'm filled with wonder? When I look at skyscrapers, at the man-made, at what men were able to achieve on their own, unaided, so-called, mind, without the help of faith, yeah. Desires or any sort of mysticism. You know what you see in those skyscrapers? What? Lonely people with in-baskets and out-baskets and dead-end jobs and no creative challenge and bosses who don't appreciate what they're doing and underpaid exploitation on the part of uh, many, many people who go in like cattle, filing into these ecological disasters that let too much heat in in the summertime. You're an too ecologist? Much... All right, let me ask you. Would any human being, even a basket case, be better off in Iran or in Soviet Russia? Oh, well, no, of course not, but maybe... But wait, but the people who made what I see when I see the skyscrapers is the men who devised them. The Howard Dork in, uh, in uh, uh, the Fountainhead. The people who had the ability to bring us that far away from primitive jungles. Now that's the, the achievement. And observe, in this country, the poorest, most handicapped person is better off than a fully abled man in almost everywhere else in the world. You were born, I should say, just uh, in uh, Tsarist Russia, 19-something. Yeah. 1905. You're 75 years old. That's right. Um, <laughs> you, you, Thank you. Didn't your people, didn't your family flee the, Ruff, the Russian Revolution? No. They didn't. Yes. You fled in the 20s then. You left in the 20s. I left in 1926, alone. All right. Uh, what well, did you leave in fear, or do you have childhood memories of the... Uh... Uh, in fear of what? Of Russia? Yeah. In complete loathing. Loathing. For the whole country, and including the Tsarist period. It is the ugliest, and incidentally most mystical, country on earth. But they're, they're the ones that decry atheism. They're singing your song. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no. The people, uh, huh? Oh, no. I'm sorry, decry uh, Christianity. I'm sorry, decry religion is what I meant to say. No, they really don't. They have a materialistic mysticism of their own. Because if the mystics, the religionist people tell you uh, the mind, uh, well, they don't speak of the mind, but usually the soul is the only thing of value about you, the body is evil. The Russians, the Russians, say, Russians that. say no. I said the religions say yes, that. Yes, they do, yes. And the uh, Russians will say, no, there isn't such a thing as a soul or a mind. There's only your body. 
It's materialism. They believe that you're not a man, but a collection of atoms.